the entire team of Family Hour together with myself. We welcome you to today's edition of the Family Hour. Family Hour is only on Church of Uganda Family TV, empowering families one episode at a time. This is our Tuesday edition where we discuss family health. Adrian Austin Mukalazi is my name and today we are discussing one of uh, those conditions that probably some of us ignore and and it, uh, these are, this is a very common uh, condition in uh, young adults. So if you're a young adult, please sit where you are, just uh, listening to this discussion until we conclude. By the time we end this show, you will have learned a lot. Remember, uh, the whole of this month, we are looking at heart health. We are looking at uh, cardiovascular diseases, how they can be managed, but most importantly, how they can be prevented. We are uh, moving on with the Uganda Heart Institute. Uh, we are dealing with the heart because at the end of the day, your heart is very, very important. Without a heart, you have no life. Now, if you're careless with the heart, if I can put it like that, then your life is at stake. It is important that you pay much attention and you be cautious about your heart because you realize that uh, non-communicable diseases uh, and uh, cardiovascular diseases are part of the non-communicable diseases are uh, the leading causes of deaths in uh, developing countries uh, and Uganda is one of those developing countries that we talk about. So uh, today we are looking at the rheumatic heart disease. Uh, in Uganda, this is the most common cause of heart disease uh, among the young adults. But uh, it remains the leading cause of uh, morbidity and mortality among young adults in developing countries. So uh, it is really a very, very serious condition because if we do not have the young adults, then we do not have a generation. We are missing out a generation we are the country's future. You and I are Uganda's future. Therefore, it is important that we understand this so that we safeguard our lives. By safeguarding our lives, we are safeguarding our future. We want to be in what you people call a new Uganda together. So it is, <laughs> it is very bad to waste your heart so that you don't uh, reach the new Uganda which you want to see. I wonder if it exists anyway because Uganda is Uganda. But with us is Mrs. Chitole Ko Samali, uh, who is a nursing officer from Uganda Heart Institute. You're most welcome to this discussion. Thank you, Mr. Presenter. Yeah. Nice to be here. Surely. Kindly yeah. greet our viewers as we derive into today's discussion. Beautiful viewers of Family TV, I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. So, uh, how is Heart Institute? If we can start it from there. <laughs> Heart Institute is well. Okay. We are doing our best to okay. take care of people's hearts. Thank you so much for serving the nation. You are welcome. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, uh, each, uh, each time I, I pass by, I find there are very many people coming up. I don't know, some people are coming for checkup, others are coming for the next appointments. And you realize uh, there is a lot that we need to do, especially when it comes to awareness, especially mm -hmm. uh, some of these conditions that we talk about. Because days ago, we used to think that uh, heart diseases were for the rich or for the aged. Mm -hmm. And today you realize even young ones uh, really have heart diseases, which is really a very, very challenging. But let us talk about uh, rheumatic heart disease. What is it? Because someone might be hearing it for the first time. Perhaps mm -hmm. they don't even know it exists. Yet we are saying it is one of the leading causes of heart diseases. Thank you, Mr. Presenter. I want to repeat that word in a very slow mode. Mm. Because at one point, a patient surprised me and told me, mm. the doctor has told me I have romantic heart disease and I don't even have a fiance. How can I ha be having <laughs> romantic heart disease? So the word is, or the term is, rheumatic heart disease not romantic not romantic heart disease okay so uh, rheumatic heart disease in simple terms is a heart disease which is due to permanent damage to the heart valves okay that is the simplest definition i can give and mm. in that definition we have two important terms that shouldn't be missed out mm. the first one is the heart valves mm. 
The heart valves are structures which are located in our heart, which acts like doorways. Because the heart has four chambers and two big blood vessels taking blood away from the heart. So for blood to move from one chamber to another, it passes through a doorway, just like I passed through that door to come in here. So uh, those valves are four in the heart. They open to allow blood flow in one direction, then close to prevent that blood from flowing in the opposite direction. Okay. So that is the part of the heart which is affected in rheumatic heart disease. Mm. And then the other important part of that definition is that the damage that happened to the heart valves in rheumatic heart disease is permanent. So that's why the definition is as simple as rheumatic heart disease is a disease that affects the heart and causes permanent damage to the heart valves. So, uh, permanent damage. You know, when we hear exactly. the word permanent, it is a little uh, causing uh, some disillusionment. Mm -hmm. As <laughs> when you say permanent, meaning there is no hope for restructuring. Yeah, I may say yes or no, because the problem in, in our setting here, mm -hmm. many times patients reach the hospitals or reach heart institute when the disease is fully blown. Mm -hmm. Like there is nothing much we can do to change the damage which is already there, and the best we can do is probably prevent further damage. Oh. Yes, yeah, so by the time we get people, we cannot reverse what has already happened, mm -hmm. but we can do our best to prevent further damage. Yes, but wow. it doesn't mean that somebody has to die because they have rheumatic heart disease. As we'll see in the treatment, there yeah. is a lot we can do okay. to give uh, another chance to these people to live. Okay. Yeah. Now, we look at uh, this. How is it acquired? Because um, it is, it, you know, uh, to some people, it is something new. Mm -hmm. uh, they're hearing it probably for the first time or someone is wondering, then how do I get that uh, permanent heart uh, uh, perma the, the permanent damage of the heart valves. Last week we were looking at uh, nutrition mm -hmm. and we looked at a lot uh, about how the foods we eat can really uh, now make our heart sick. sick. So let us look at what causes this disease basically. So rheumatic heart disease uh, is under a group of diseases called non-communicable diseases, mm. meaning it cannot be transmitted from one person to another like HIV. Mm. So uh, rheumatic heart disease for it, it starts with a simple thing, a sore throat infection. Mm -hmm. Sore throat infection, having sores in the throat. Mm. So those sores in the throat come about when somebody gets exposed to a bacteria, simple bacteria, not even visible with a naked eye. You need a microscope to see it. So it gains uh, access into your body through the nose, the mouth, then it settles in your throat and it causes sores in the throat, which people commonly call amawago mobulago. Yes. And uh, some people normally move around saying, me, I have tensors, I suffer from tensors, mm. that kind of thing. So those sore throat infection caused by this particular bacteria, if they are not handled well, if they are not treated with the antibiotics for the recommended period of time to kill this bacteria, that's the source of rheumatic heart disease. Because mm. what happens? After about three weeks of untreated sore throat infection, mm. the host body will try to make what we call them antibodies, but in a local term you can call them like soldiers. Mm. Your body will make soldiers to come and fight this bacteria. Unfortunately, in some people, not all of us, mm. in some people, instead of these soldiers fighting the invading bacteria, they end up attacking different structures of your body. Mm. So it's like your body fighting itself, okay? And one of the structures which are badly affected are the heart valves. So when the heart valves are, atta are attacked by your own antibodies, mm. they get what I can say, uh, what I can call wounds, but mm. medically we call it inflammation. So at the end of inflammation, there is forming of a scar tissue. When a scar tissue forms, then this calcium, which is the iron which makes our bones and teeth strong, mm goes and deposits in that, uh, in that scar, okay? Then the valve, which has a scar, and the calcium deposited there, will become thick and stiff. Mm. And uh, once it is thick and stiff, it will either fail to open properly, or it will open but fail to close properly. And that will disrupt the way the heart functions, and that's when we say somebody has rheumatic heart disease. Oh. 
So that's the journey from a simple sore throat infection, mm. not treated well. Oh, I missed one step. Mm. So when you get a sore throat infection, mm. don't treat it properly. Mm. Then your body is trying to fight for itself. During that time when the body is trying to fight for itself and attacks itself, one gets a fever we call rheumatic heart fever. A fever called rheumatic fever, which not so many people know, mm. including medical workers. They end up treating malaria for every case of a child who has fever going to them. So they end up not diagnosing that fever at that stage, and therefore not treating it. And then consequently, repeated attacks of that fever, that's when somebody gets rheumatic heart disease. Mm. Yes. So how different are the signs of this fever uh, from those of the normal fever, uh, let's say maybe malaria or any other fever? A very, very important question. Now, uh, this fever is common between the ages of 5 and 15. Children between the ages of 5 and 15, mm. those are the age groups which commonly get this fever. So a child, a child will feel hot. That's what we call fever. Mm. A body temperature is mm. high. They may, have sore, they may feel sore in the throat, mm. but importantly, they have joint pains, pain in the big joints. And uh, how to differentiate that joint pain from other causes of joint pain is that this kind of joint pains, is, we call it migratory, it keeps moving from one joint to another. In the morning, the child may tell you, my right uh, ankle joint is paining. Mm. In the evening, they tell you, oh, the pain here has reduced. Now it is in the left one. Mm. Then in the following day, again, it is the knee joint. Like the pain may keep moving from one joint to another. Mm. It doesn't normally come and attack at the same time. So it keeps moving. Mm. And that's how we commonly differentiate this fever from other fevers. Okay. But of course, the child will have other things like loss of appetite, a headache. But uniquely, it is that joint pains. But then... There is also a unique feature a child may have. They may get involuntary body movements. Medically, yeah. we call it chorea. Mm. Like a child is not dancing, but you find them moving like somebody is enjoying mm. the music mm. and dancing. Uh, the hand may move and a child may drop a pen, may fail to write. May to write. Uh, somebody may be peeling and then the, the knife falls out of their the, the hand or somebody may be taking tea and the cup fall, I mean, it falls out of their hands. So those are kind of unique features. If seen in children between the ages of 5 and 15, shouldn't be neglected. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what if as a, a parent discovers this in a child of 18, mm -hmm. should the worry be minimal? Have they gone beyond the age of having this fever? Not really, actually, up to the age of 20, we get worried, but commonly it is okay. between the ages of 5 and 15. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, y we, we talked about uh, the, the sore throat infection. Is it, the, is it the only cause of this, or there are m some other causes that we can talk about? There are some other causes, like a skin infection, medically, we yeah. call it scarlet fever, but it's not common in Uganda. Okay. In Uganda, commonly, it is the sore throat infection. Mm. And also, not all sore throat infections can lead to rheumatic heart disease. Mm. Some of them are caused by virus others are bacteria oh. but even those caused by bacteria there is this unique bacteria which i will not mention here mm -hmm. but anyway if there is any medical person hearing we call it a group a beta hemolytic streptococcus because there could be a child can have a sore throat caused by different kinds of bacteria mm. but this one in particular is called a group a beta hemolytic streptococcus mm -hmm. it's the one which can lead to rheumatic disease okay yeah so meaning uh they should there should be a test to be to, to, to differentiate this exactly so when a child uh, comes to us mm. complaining of a sore throat mm. fever blah blah mm. we use a torch we tell the mm. child to open the mouth and we use a torch to light at the back of the mouth medically we have distinguishing features when we look down there which can let us know that this is a bacterial problem or this is viral mm. and we can treat accordingly mm. And then we can go ahead also to do some laboratory tests. We do what we call a throat swab. Mm. We use a, a stick which has a, a cotton ball on top of it. We pass it around there behind the throat. Then we, take, we send it to the laboratory and check if this bacteria is really the one which we are worried of. 
So uh, yes, we can do the tests and confirm. Okay. Are the swabs are similar to those they used to test COVID-19? They used to test COVID-19. It looks the same because it has that cotton ball on top. It's the one we used to swap around mm. and pick any bacteria which may be there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well you, you've actually talked about uh, most of the signs, uh, how this... Uh, Oh, we are talking about rheumatic the, 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 fever. Yeah, the rheumatic fever. Because they move hand in hand with yes. rheumatic heart disease. Yes. Now, let us talk about uh, the disease itself and how it uh, it shows up mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, between the, the, the people or uh, of the age group we've talked about. Okay. Thank you so much. So, how a child with rheumatic heart disease may present? Mm -hmm. They have the following symptoms. They may start by getting tired easily. A child who has been able to walk and reach school on time, they start reaching there late, okay? Because along the way when others are running, for them they can't run. Mm -hmm. They try to walk a bit faster, they get tired easily because their heart is weak, okay? You find a child cannot do the things they used to do. Has been able to wash their clothes, now they cannot because they are feeling weak, okay? They can, f get, they can feel palpitations where we, uh, like the heart is beating fast or it's racing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you t uh, the child takes off the shirt, you can even see on the left side, like there is a lot of pumping. The heart is pumping a lot or racing a lot. Then a child may be coughing. Coughing is one of the signs of heart diseases when the lungs are congested, especially when they are heart in heart failure. They can get body swelling. The feet can swell. The abdomen can swell especially on the, on the right side, because that's where the liver is, they may feel something hard, like a stone. And many times we see patients in the hospitals where they have what we call therapeutic marks, eh, those things, yeah. which shows that the child had a, swell, a swollen liver, they first went around there somewhere, and yeah. then they did those therapeutic yeah. things. Yeah. Then by the time they come to hospital, probably it's a bit late. But anyway, the child will get body swelling, Sometimes they can cough blood, okay? And then sometimes the child can just collapse. Can collapse and even get paralysis on one side of the body, mm -hmm. okay? Those could be some, some of the symptoms that one can know that a child has heart disease. But uh, because any other, heart, uh, any other body problem can give you such, mm -hmm. when a parent sees a child with such symptoms, mm -hmm. it is best they take them to a healthy worker. Uh, Uganda Heart Institute is a tertiary center, Lifal. We have so many health facilities down below us. So if a parent takes a child to one of the health facilities down there, the people at that health facility can use a stethoscope, this machine we put mm. in the ears. Mm. Okay? So when a medical person puts that machine on the left side of the chest where the heart is, they will be able to hear that the heart is not beating the normal way because we know how the normal way the heart is supposed to beat. Mm. So that medical worker can be able to pick some funny beating and then you will be able to send that child to Uganda Heart Institute where we use machines to do a scan and then see that yes, the heart is affected by rheumatic heart disease. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, what are the most uh, risky age groups? Because uh, you told us that uh, majorly between the age of 5 and 15, mm -hmm. now these ones have the fever. The fever uh, shows up mostly in those mm -hmm. ones. What about this disease? At what age uh, do you normally, okay, the patients you, uh, you attend to, uh, what is their age group uh, at the time this disease now shows up or surfaces? So like I said, commonly between the ages of 5 and 15, that's where children get this disease. Mm -hmm. But some of them are slow progressors that we can even pick somebody at 50 for the first time when they've been progressing slowly. Mm -hmm. Others are very fast progressors that the child gets the first attack of rheumatic fever in January and by December they have flu-blown disease. Okay? So it, it, it really moves on, it depends. Some people progress rapidly, we pick them early. And then others, we may pick them at 50, not because that's when the disease has, has shown up, but because our people have um, what we call poor health-seeking behaviors. Mm -hmm. they, they become sick, they keep rotating around, using herbal medications, and then also our referral system is kind of slow. Somebody moves mm -hmm. from health center two, three, four. Like by the time they come to the tertiary center, 
like they've been sick for the past 20 years and moving around. So that's why it's hard to say that we get them at 20, at 40. It can be all through, mm -hmm. but not because they've gotten it at that time, but because they take a lot of time. By the time they reach us, they've had it for a long time. And also the, 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 the age group at risk or the population at risk are the pregnant women. Mm. Because naturally when women become pregnant, our heart doubles the way it is supposed to function in order to nurture the growing fetus. So if a mother has rheumatic heart disease and, and has been relatively fine before pregnancy, when they get pregnant, this disease tends to, 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 like to, uh, to, to move to, to, to move very fast and probably show up when they are still pregnant or soon after birth. So when we are talking about risky populations, we also talk about pregnant women. Okay. Yeah, because if somebody is not pregnant, they can stay with it for some time. Mm. Like it is moving on slowly, but when they get pregnant, it is rare that they will go without being recognized mm. because the symptoms will come up rapidly. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, is there any chance uh, that uh, some of these symptoms can be genetic and inherited? Probably if a mother has the conditions and um, probably the disease, that they can pass on some to the child they are carrying? Uh, thank you. So, it's not like the mother will pass on the disease to the child, mm. but there is a genetic susceptibility to developing rheumatic heart disease in that for instance, all of us, me and you, we've ever gotten a sore throat infection. Yes. But why didn't we get rheumatic heart disease? I can't explain <laughs> that here. But genetics play a role, mm. whereby a mother may have the genes which predispose the heart to getting rheumatic heart disease, mm. and then pass on those genes to a child. And then also that child also has the ability to develop rheumatic heart disease, or is at risk of developing rheumatic heart disease. Mm. So yes, genetics play a role, and for that reason, normally we even encourage parents, if they have a child who is diagnosed with rheumatic heart disease, uh, to have other f children screened. And we've also had cases where we have a child and a mother having the disease. Rarely a father and a child. In fact, I've not seen that. Mm. Because literature has it that it is the women who are at high risk of getting rheumatic heart disease because if in her genes she has the capability of developing rheumatic fever mm. and then she's always nursing this child who is having rheumatic heart disease because when a, ch when a child is sick like where i grew up mm. uh, the mother could even displace the father and then brings you and you sleep with her so that she can take mm. it sponge you like take good care of you at mm. night okay so during that time of closeness it is either for the mother to get this bacteria to from the child mm. if they have it yeah, so true, yes, genetics plays a role in the development of rheumatic heart disease. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, actually, when you say that, that I, I don't know. I, I think I need to do a, a, a check-up. No, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you never yeah. know. I might be one of those you talked about. True. Because, yeah. um, yeah. I've, I've, uh, like you said, I've personally had uh, a thaw, uh, sore throat infections, and uh, not once, not twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there is a way Ugandans have adopted uh, a tendency of self-medication. Mm -hmm. So you get a, 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 a sore throat infection, you go to the hospital or to a, fa a facility, they prescribe some medicine for you. Next time when you get the same symptoms, you would want to go for you the will same. Go f you don't even go this time to the facility. You go to a pharmacy with uh, the other prescription. You mm -hmm. buy the same medicine, and probably sometimes they work, mm -hmm. and the uh, symptoms go away. Uh, how dangerous is this? Now, set up for medication very dangerous because. When uh, somebody is sick, you come to us, you mm. explain to us how you are feeling. Yeah. Then we are able to probably have a crew, it could be this disease. Then we mm. are supposed to run investigations because quite a number of diseases can present the same way. Mm. So at the health facility, we are supposed to do investigations. Mm. If we are not able to do investigations, there are some characteristic features, like I told you, when we tell you to open the mouth, mm. For us, we can tell that this infection is caused by a virus 
and you know viruses we don't give medication mm. they are self-limiting okay mm. but if it's bacteria we are able to differentiate it mm. so uh, self-medication is not good because we end up taking the same same antibiotics wrongfully then we develop uh, resistance whereby if you really need that bacteria uh, no, that antibiotic mm. you misused it it can no longer work mm. and then also people have a tendency of not completing medications yeah. Uh, you go to a health facility, yes, they give you a prescription, you are supposed to take it for a week. When somebody takes for four days and the uh, pain has gone, they just leave alone medicine. So, mm. self-medication, not completing prescribed medications, they are not good at all. In okay. any disease, okay. even away from RHD. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, this disease is really very, very serious. And you who is watching us, uh, I know you're, you, you've started having a point of reflection, like some of us here in studio are. Uh, I know Brinko is already having a point of reflection, wondering whether he is safe. But let's take a short commercial break. When we return, we are going to continue with uh, more facts about this particular disease. Most importantly, the message we are bringing to you this evening is the preventive measures which you do not have to miss. Stick with us. Thank you so much who is watching Church of Uganda Family TV. This is the Family Hour. Adrian Austin Mukalazi is my name. Now, Family Hour is on every Monday to Friday. You do not have to miss our fully packed editions from Monday to Friday. Just in case you're watching us for the first time, Monday we are always discussing education and career. Tuesday we are talking health like we are today. Wednesday is always about finances and uh, wealth. Thursday, leadership and governance. And now we close down the discussions with Claire Buenje on Friday as uh, we talk about parenting, which is very, very important. But just in case you miss out the discussion, you can always uh, get uh, the shows on our YouTube channel. That is COU Family TV. You subscribe, you share. Yeah, but most importantly, you watch these movies. Of course, you the, sorry these uh, programs because you can always visit them and watch and watch and watch. For example, what we are discussing today, it is very important. I believe you, a parent who is watching us, a teacher, because you realize even teachers stay with these children for a long time and you can easily learn about this. I believe it is also impacting you, uh, the guardians, the caretakers, and very many other people who are involved in a child grooming. You realize that uh, this is something that we all need to pay attention to because it can lead to a very deadly disease that we are talking about today. That is rheumatic heart disease, not romantic <laughs> <laughs> heart disease. But uh, we are with um, Ms. Chitole Kosamali from Uganda Heart Institute, taking us through this disease. Uh, before the break, you had actually talked about um, some of the signs and uh, symptoms or some of the uh, the ways in which this particular uh, disease presents. But there is something you talked about, and uh, as a nursing officer, probably you could have an answer. Mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, very many Ugandans have really a poor health-seeking ne network, like you talked about? We call <laughs> it poor health-seeking behavior. Behavior, yes. Um, uh, not knowing the danger of whatever symptoms they may be, ha they may be having, they okay. underlook them like a sore throat in this matter. Mm. No, n even when I grew up in the village, when we got sore throat infections, we could get some herbs, chew mm. them, and then mm. it is gone. We never knew, even my mother never knew, even my father never knew that this could lead to a heart disease. So yeah. I don't want to call it ignorance, but that's it. Not knowing that danger in whatever symptoms they have. Then the other thing is the finances. Sometimes they would love to go to hospital, but they do not have the money. 
health facilities being far from them. Mm -hmm. Like somebody needs money for transport to reach the health facility, and again, when they reach there, probably even the drugs are not there. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a mixture of things, mixture of things. Yeah, okay. rating from individual mm -hmm. to community level to mm -hmm. government level. Yeah, mm -hmm. different ways. Well, uh, we talk about uh, the management. So a child or a parent or someone has come and they have, uh, you've, uh, they have come to a health facility before they even uh, uh, referred to Uganda Heart Institute. So they have mm. gone to the facility they have gone to. Uh, what should someone expect? Uh, what kind of care should they expect? And if they are to be referred to Uganda Heart Institute, what should they expect when they reach there? Okay, at the health facility level, like I said, when a doctor or anybody there listens to the chest and they feel the heart is not beating well, mm -hmm. they normally write out a referral letter and refer that patient to Uganda Heart Institute. So when they come to Heart Institute, definitely we receive them. We examine also to confirm the symptoms which are stated on the referral letter. Then we'll take them through, a, we call it a scan of the heart. We call it echocardiogram, so it's like mm. a scan of the heart, which we do to help us to really establish the presence of the disease and also rate its severity. It can be mild, moderate, severe, or any other changes that have happened to the heart. Mm. And uh, once that is done and we've confirmed the disease, then we take patients through a counseling process because we need them to understand this. This being a chronic illness, you are going to give somebody treatment they are going to take for the rest of their life. They may not adhere to it so well if they don't know why they are taking it. Okay. Personal, I do a lot of counseling, family counseling, patient counseling. I, I break it down to a level that they can understand and they know the reason why they are taking these medications we are giving them and it has helped them a lot to adhere to them so that life can go on because i told you there is permanent damage to the heart valves and when we see treatment you'll be surprised to hear that somebody may have to take it for the rest of their lives even if it were young you are busy taking tablets you don't even know why they're yeah. taking them at one point you get disgusted and throw them away sure. but if you've been told that when you don't take these tablets this will happen to you and in fact you'll die mm. you, you that will be a motivator for you to take the tablets <laughs> because yeah. no one wants <laughs> to die nobody <laughs> wants to die so what kind of uh, treatment do they get um, because you've already you've already talked about uh, the palliative care where you mm -hmm. give them counseling and which is actually very very important but some of us have a misconception about counseling especially when you, <laughs> when you mm -hmm. go to a health facility mm -hmm. and they sit you aside uh, I, I think somehow i don't know why people think they are going to die soon simply because someone <laughs> has, has talked to them because we fear death <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in the management of rheumatic heart disease, yeah. like I said, there is mm. permanent damage. Mm. So we have aims of treatment, mm. and those aims, none of them is intended to cause a cure or to remove the problem which is already there. So one yeah. of the aims is to relieve symptoms. By the time somebody comes to us, they have disturbing symptoms. Mm. Their body is swollen, they are disfigured, they are getting tired easily, they are coughing non-stop. So we want to take away those symptoms. We may not take them away completely because what has brought them is still there. But we want to relieve them and give somebody a better quality of life. Mm. Uh, secondly, in the aims of treatment, we want to prevent complications. We very well know the complications of this disease. There is heart failure, there is stroke and some others. So we c try to prevent those which have not happened. And also those which have already happened, we manage them. So like we, man we manage complications, okay? So mainly those are the three ways we manage the disease, okay? But those who come when the disease is fully blown, it's at severe level, they have symptoms, we can manage by doing a procedure called ballooning because some people have tight, tight valves which are not opening up. We can use a procedure which can open up that valve without subjecting that person to a major surgery. So that's one way of treating uh, rheumatic heart disease valves. The other way is a surgery to repair the valve, especially in young ones. We can repair the valve and make it better. Then thirdly, uh, we do surgery to remove that valve 
and replace it with another one. If it is severely damaged, we have no choice than to remove it and put something else that uh, some Muzungu made in the factory somewhere. So we give you that one, put it in your heart. Yes, to give you a better, better life. It improves the quality of life. We've seen children who have had surgery at a young stage and now they are grown up. We have big and, um, and um, uh, very important people in this country who have rheumatic heart disease. Yes, they had surgery. When you find them walking on the streets, they are dressed in suits like you. You can't know, With but they have rheumatic. Bag. It's metallic. With a metallic bag. There are different types, but commonly we can use a metallic mm -hmm. one, different forms. Okay. Yeah. So all these surgeries made... Uh, are taken on at uh, the Uganda Heart Institute or yes. someone needs to go out of the country? The three kind of interventions, the ballooning, the valve repair, the valve placement, all of them are done at Uganda Heart Institute. Okay. There is no need of someone flying to go to some country. Okay. We do it at Uganda Heart Institute. Days back, uh, each time they diagnosed you with a heart problem, the next question, the, the next thing was, how do I go to India? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are grateful that uh, some of these uh, interventions uh, can be taken on at Uganda Heart Institute. Yep. Now, um, is there anything else you do, uh, you, you can do about this disease, besides the ones we've talked about, in managing this disease? Mainly it is those ones. Okay. But also importantly to prevent further damage, because we can get somebody who is at the stage of rheumatic fever, mm. we can comfortably manage them so that they don't get rheumatic heart disease. Mm. And then those who have gotten rheumatic heart disease, sometimes at an early stage, we can manage them so that they, it doesn't progress, preventing disease progression. Yeah. Mm. So at any level where somebody comes, we can manage them, but the worst is many of the patients report uh, come to us when at a late stage mm. the disease is fully blown the heart is weak they've developed complications and we just try to make their lives better okay but, <laughs> yeah okay good enough you make the lives better and uh, i think that is good enough as well yeah. uh, though uh, what would be really very important is you being even more healthy uh, so uh, the message we are communicating here is one to create the awareness just in case you didn't know this disease exists now you know and you know how deadly it is so it is really important that you uh, take time can i uh, go for for a checkup, even when I've not had some of these symptoms, just to be sure I'm safe, or the, 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 the checkups you have and the diagnosis are for only those who have signs and symptoms? Uh, very nice questions. Actually, Ugandans, why many times we present to health facilities when the diseases are fully blown? Because mm. we don't have these ten tendencies of having regular checkups. Yes. Uh, we have a few wellness clinics in town here where you just walk in. You don't have any symptoms. You just go in, they check your liver, your heart, your mm. kidney. It's a nice practice. Even at Uganda Heart Institute, if you say, mm, I just want to, ha to check my heart, we won't chase you away. Okay. We can still check you. Okay. And many times we can pick diseases at an early stage and we manage them before they give you complications. Mm. Yeah. Well, that is very important and that is one of the ways of preventing all... Um, getting to know whether you have this disease so that it can be uh, managed at an early stage but like i said earlier the message we want to bring here is how do we prevent how do we guard our hearts how do we prevent our hearts from getting or getting exposed to some of these diseases like the rheumatic heart disease so how can we prevent ourselves from getting this disease Nice, very nice. So the points I'm going to talk about uh, in the interest of time, they would have been mentioned in uh, risk factors. Mm -hmm. But now because we didn't have time to go through that. So what I'm going to talk about, just remember that when that point is there in my life, I'm at a high risk of getting rheumatic heart disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, in prevention, we have three stages. We have primordial level, primary level, secondary level. But in primordial level, we are looking at somebody who has not got rheumatic fever or has not got the sore throat infection. How can we prevent rheumatic heart disease? So those ones we normally say we should prevent things like overcrowding. Overcrowding, especially in children, in those age groups I talked about, it can be... Uh, 
like at family level, like a small house being occupied by so many people, many occupants, it, it, it moves from a house to a room where one single room is occupied by many children. Then it goes to a level of a bed where you find one bed is occupied by more than even one child. Yeah. So if one member, one child in that family has this bacteria we are talking about, it can easily be passed on from one child to another. And then the disease is easily, sp like they easily get this disease. So preventing overcrowding, mm. the way we build our houses, let's build spacious houses if it's possible. <laughs> let's not put so many children in one room, mm. in one bed, okay, preventing such things. Now this, I think, also goes to schools. Uh, we came to realize that in some schools, uh, children are made to, s to share mm -hmm. beds, I think partly because of limited space. Yeah. And it is very important that at least you, the school proprietors, the teachers, get to know about this. Very mm. important. Even in the class classrooms where children s uh, sit, eh? mm. uh, they, if they are so congested, there is no fresh air, they can easily, one child having this bacteria can easily spread it, spread it to others. Then we go to another thing of uh, improving our children's immunities. Mm. Because like I told you, all of us at one point we ever gotten this bacteria. And yes. many times we get uh, bacteria, virus in our bodies. And if we have a good immune system, our bodies can fight them before they do harm to us. So we need to build the immune system of our children. Let's give them proteins, do the energy, I mean bodybuilding foods. Uh, they need the eggs, they need the chicken, okay? good enough gone are the days when the men are the only <laughs> people who eat chicken in the house okay so these days even children can eat chicken mm. but we need gi to give them the milk we need to give them uh, fruits to give them vitamins mm. a child needs fruits on a daily basis the vitamins we get in the fruits are rarely kept by our bodies or stored so we need them on a daily basis so daily never supply. fruits are known to luxury as people put never it. never Fruits are part of one, one whose life. They shouldn't be a luxury at all. So let's give our children fruits so that uh, their immune systems are boosted. Uh, let's teach our children hand washing. If we can mm -hmm. go back to how it was in the COVID, if these children at school, at home, practice hand washing, if a child had this bacteria and first of all cough, the way they cough, mm. if you, te you teach your child to cough like this, other than shh, and mm. gush the bacteria mm. in the whole environment, mm. okay? All to do like this. Teach children to have handkerchiefs. When you are going to cough, you cover your mouth mm. so that whatever bacteria you had in you that came in the air you breathed out is kept in the, back, in the handkerchief. Then you wash your hands because this child is going to touch the surfaces where others are going to come and touch and pick up that bacteria. Mm. So coughing at quiet, using handkerchiefs, coughing in the amp in the in their arms, arms, then washing hands with soap and water. When they reach home, this handkerchief they've had, let them wash it and if possible, iron it. Okay? Actually so at that level, we are going to prevent the mm. bacteria from spreading from one child mm. to another. So that is the first step. You've reminded me of uh, the COVID days where the mm. uh, president insisted you should cough from the elbow so exactly. that it is guarded from here. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Parents and uh, those uh, people at home and those taking care of these children, I think it now gets back to being exemplary mm -hmm. because you cannot teach a child what <laughs> and you, you do don't want to do. <laughs> exactly. Sure. You don't. Uh, you don't. You never have a hank in life, and you want them to have hankies. I remember when we were in in nursery, the teachers used to say, "Put your hanky here." Yeah, yeah. It is hanging here. <laughs> uh -huh, like it this. hangs from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I think uh, we need to emulate that as parents. Uh, so that we can easily teach the little ones because they, sometimes they look at what you do and they want to do exactly what you do even when you think you're telling them to do the right thing as you keep on doing the wrong thing. They'll also copy what you're doing. So when you do this, I think somehow it, it, you, you don't need to tell them. Yeah. They'll copy they it. See what you when they see you washing your hands frequently, they'll copy that and they'll wash the hands. The way we used to do it in COVID. Yeah. Because they were seeing everyone washing, they then were they also, also washing, washing But hands. now <laughs> that habit has faded away. Maybe we are waiting for another attack of COVID. <laughs> but we have another one here. 
which is um, also deadly. <laughs> the one we are talking about. Yeah. Mm. All right. So uh, the second level of prevention is the primary level where s- somebody has gotten the sore throat infections. Yes. I caution children, I'm a mother, I'm a nurse, I'm everything. Please, when you get a sore throat infection, as in we, when you feel it is sore in your throat, especially when you are swallowing, you feel like it is pain, please tell somebody who is taking care of you, your caretaker, the teacher at school, inform them, I have a sore throat infection. I feel it is sore in my throat, and I heard Musawa Samali mentioning that if you have a sore throat infection, it can lead to a heart disease. So, and then you elders, when these children report to you that they have a sore throat infection, don't take it lightly. Don't just make them do salt goggles and stop there. Bring them to the health facilities, which health facilities will do the needful to check whether it is bacterial, viral, whatever it is. Then they will prescribe the right medications. And when the medications are prescribed, please, children, take these medications and complete the dose. If the dose is for a whole week or five days, don't take, for three, don't take for three days and you are fine, then throw it away or stop it. Complete the course of the treatment, right? In the interest of, interest of time, we move on to the next level uh, mm. where somebody has rheumatic fever. Mm. Now, I'm going to stress this especially to my fellow uh, medical people. Oh, yes. Not everyone who has fever has malaria and typhoid. That has been a very common thing around whatever child goes to the clinic, mm. they say you have malaria and typhoid at the same time. Exactly. It is not always. And sometimes they add brucella. Much as we are in the tropics where malaria is the first thing you think of, but there is this fever called rheumatic fever, which is common in that age group. Please, if you test malaria is not there, maybe typhoid you've done is not there, refer those children to bigger health facilities where they can do a blood test we call assault, okay? That assault will be able to tell us if this child has a rheumatic fever or not. And then when we diagnose it, we can comfortably treat it for some good time. Okay, we can give tablets, we can give an injection which they get every month for some time as we monitor them so that we prevent them from getting rheumatic heart disease, mm-hmm. okay? Then for those who have already got rheumatic heart disease, the treatment is going to be almost for life. Because I said there is permanent damage. Mm. So by the time we get you, we want to prevent further damage. We want to treat the complications you've already gotten. We want to prevent complications that we know will come. But the damage which has already happened, we cannot take it away. Mm. So the best way to prevent is to work on the first, first things I talked about. Mm. Yes. Wow. Uh, very, very important. I loved it, uh, especially when you... You advise the children to, <laughs> to take their medicine as prescribed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I look at a parent still who rarely completes their dose, mm. but they're supposed to supervise this child. <laughs> uh, like a mother, <laughs> like a daughter, or like father, <laughs> like son. So you realize that it gets back to us, the mm-hmm. elders, that the little ones will really emulate the habits that you do. As, uh, but as we wind up this discussion, uh, Musao Samali, what are your last remarks uh, concerning this disease? My last remarks is to bring it to the public that yes, r- uh, rheumatic fever exists, rheumatic heart disease exists, and it has taken many children, many, many young, pe- young people who are in the age, age groups where they are supposed to be working, they are supposed to be having children and enlarging this country, this country's population. So it exists and it shouldn't be uh, neglected. We want it to be known just like children know about HIV, children know about malaria in schools. We've tried as much as possible to go down to the schools to talk about this disease. In some places where we've not reached, please, school heads, invite us. We can come and talk about this disease in the, in the, in, to your children. And also we do school screening. We've di- done quite uh, a lot of screening in Kampala, out of Kampala. We just go to a school with our machines. We get the children and put that machine on their heart only to see that they are at school praying, they don't know that their hearts are sick. So we've been able to pick many at an early stage and we've managed them. And where they are now, we are very sure they will not develop rheumatic heart disease. So 
to the public there, please, when you have your child who presents, like I mentioned, don't just take things lightly, bring them to Uganda Heart Institute or any nearby health facility. Uh, they will be able to help you. And if we give you treatment, please take it. There is a very funny treatment I give my patients at Uganda Heart Institute, an injection they get every month. Please get that injection every month so that we prevent further damage to your heart. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are indeed grateful, and it has been really an insightful and educative discussion uh, because it is really very important to you and to me, plus everyone else out there, especially if we equip ourselves with such information. Thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, we've had uh, Mrs. Chitole Kosamali who is a nursing officer from Uganda Heart Institute. We shall still have another guest from Heart Institute next week on Tuesday as we discuss some of these heart diseases that you do not have to miss. But as for today, it's been a pleasure having you. Tomorrow is a Wednesday. We shall be discussing family finances and wealth. You do not have to miss the discussion. We shall have exciting guests that you will that will really enrich your life. Now uh, up next is Soul Moment and we have uh, Mrs. Irene Kauma taking us through the journey of destiny. You do not have to miss today's D or today's episode or today's uh, discussion on Soul Moment. But Later, after Soul Moment, there is a movie that you do not have to miss, which is Season of Miracle. Uh, it could be a Season of Miracle today, like my brother Brinko on camera, who is already enjoying <laughs> his Season of Miracle. Didmas in transmission, and very many other people who put.